Hello and welcome back to what is now the award-winning Emerald Play Button Finishing Line Podcast. That's us. That's us. Thank you to YouTube Ireland for entering us in a competition that we won. You going to celebrate? Oh yeah, Fever La France. We'll have a we'll have a write off. We bet all the other stupid fucking podcasts. <laughs> Sometimes the bad guys do win. <laughs> oh, oh, great! I still uh, don't know how we won. It's been a mad few weeks since Cheltenham. It has. It's been a wet fucking few weeks. It's been wet. Tom's had winner, winners in Wolverhampton. Yes. Well done, Tom. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I should say I can't take too much credit for that one. That's down to Nat and, uh, and, Nat and James. But uh, yeah, nice to see Chinwin get his head in front first time for us. So see what he can do now. Keep on improving. He might have, yeah, I think he will improve. Might have a few more races. In him, uh, he did look clueless and he was like, Oh, I meant to go past horses. Okay, I'll go win. So, Tw- Twitter is still full of Lulas. Yeah, <laughs> it's great to see you back. I must say, I didn't realize you made a reappearance under the tweet machine. I, I, saw, cha- him, I saw him liking something today. I was like, Oh, he's I back. changed phones. I changed phone. I got a new phone. <laughs> A new phone. The phone is new phone, yeah. I got a new phone and it, it had me logged in straight away and didn't log out. But I don't say anything. I just keep an eye on the shit that goes on in there. It's a lot of shit. Paddy Brennan got a lot of shit. Paddy Brennan got a lot of shit for stopping a horse. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think you can actually say that because he got done for it. So. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> yeah it's 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 anyways, he's got a handbrake from the floor. I think this might have we won. We just say what we want. Yeah, my, it's it's factual, Tom. My my word of advice when watching to see if a jockey is actually not tried on a horse or whether they've just got something wrong is their arms and their hands. Um, it's <laughs> always in, if they're in, in that the chest. Lap. I mean, you're not doing something right. <laughs> if they're buried on their neck and their arse is going up and down, <laughs> but their arms aren't moving and their hands are buried still in their neck, that means they're not pushing it. Like that's how you tell. Paddy's Paddy's style has changed quite a bit. It's through changed the years. from Superman to stop. He was elegant for all of one race. I tell you that. He kept it all in all in scheme. It was. It wasn't this reckless shit that normally goes on. It was no look. It, it all drove the side lines. I I'd say as it is. That was shocking. That was absolutely disgusting. To be honest, it, it, it that is that for me is as bad as it gets. Like it was. It was terrible. Um, yeah. And for people for people who like to promote themselves. You know, uh, as a yard who like to promote themselves as the the kind of the good guys, that was that was shocking. So, Steve, you wanted to see what was going on. Yeah, the tweet up this morning. Who? Uh, Fergal O'Brien, Twitter. Go on. Yeah, he just said thanks for all the criticism. Basically, yesterday, whether it was positive or negative, factual. He's got banned, and that's that's it. Factual. Basically, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be for. I wouldn't be promoting now sending people messages and stuff like that. Like that's that's. There's no need for that. But. Um, yeah, it's it's a terrible look. You could see it happening down the back straight. It's like yeah. he's not trying on this fella at all. He's not the only one doing it. No, he's not. He's not the only no, one doing it. And majority of it happens in fucking Ireland. Yeah, that was bad though. You don't normally see it like like. And now, and now I, I can now appreciate how I don't know how to put this. How Dan Skelton makes it look like he's not actually doing it. I appreciate the art of it now. <laughs> the art of scamming. Harry Brennan, Brennan tried the Langer Dan and he got screwed. The art of scamming. Just give him, just give him the bleeding. It's only cheating if you get caught. And Dan Skelton is a master of not getting caught. Dan Skelton is Eddie Guerrero. <laughs> oh, WrestleMania! Fuck me! I know no one watches it. Jesus what, Christ! What, the best. What the fuck is wrong with you? Oh, fuck <laughs> I, know, I know you've young kids, but like you're an adult, right? Yeah, and shut up. <laughs> Leave me alone. When you hear the dong and lights go out, orgasm. Anyway, back to race. Uh, we have a couple of shows left before the end of the season, and then we're taking the summer off. Um, this is one of them, obviously. It was supposed to be live on YouTube, but Our unfortunately, there's gremlins in the system, and it would not. 
come up live. I'm actually getting text messages from people, and I will I will text them back. Yeah, mine's going um, well. to I say thought. that we just couldn't get the live to work, but it's not our fault. Usually, it is our fault. Tom was late. It doesn't look like he was late because he was here when we restarted this, but he was in fact late again. Uh, and we're here for the Entry Grand National, the Grade Ones, the Good Races, and then the National at the end. Three selections each. That doesn't mean four, Tom. That doesn't mean five, Tom. It means three. One, two, three. Gone. Uh, before we start... Honestly, right? More chance of Paddy Brennan getting his band dropped than Tom only having three horses. <laughs> Paddy Brennan's getting thrown on the bus tonight. This time last year, Tom was all in on... Whoa, let me you learn his lesson. GS only... Have everything on, state man dance and yeah, let's, everything. Let's not revisit that. That was a, that was a that negative. That was not a dance skeleton scan. We have a competition before we start. Uh, from the horse racing pin people that make the little lovely pins that we had here on the table and we wear to the races. Um, and if you comment below there, who will win the national? Uh, the winner will get a selected number of pins, I presume the tweet machine you'll get a little dm there and uh, get to choose the colors or whatever yeah uh, and all you got to do is uh pick the winner write it in the comments and then the winner will be announced on sunday if there's a couple of people pick the winner obviously it'll be done as a draw and uh whoever wins will get some nice little horse racing pins they are class pins yeah, yeah. Tom, like you need, tom you need to get yourself some pimblico pins off the boys yep you do actually yeah yeah it's not a bad show they are deadly and on that note, we will kick straight in to the action which starts tomorrow, which is Thursday, and it's the 145, the Manifesto Novices Chase, two miles, four furlongs, and uh, not many runners, but a good race, great awning, even money favourite, Il Ete Moose, 3-1, Ginny Winnie, 9-2. Careful, <laughs> careful. <laughs> Steady Dave. Below your ward, which... No, what? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Now we have an award now. We have to be. No, say it. Which <laughs> from time to time happens to me uh, on your own in your bedroom at night. <laughs> <laughs> 14 to 1 and Colonel Harry 33 to 1. Andrew. Uh, I really like Ray Dawning, but I really like it. Let's say Tom stepping up and trip here. Uh, he's jumping with the pot at Cheltenham. You pointed out he's not, he doesn't really act around Cheltenham, which was come to pass. Um, in the Arkle, um, we go back to the DRF, he won over two mile one. He was only getting going at the end. I think the step up to two four is going to do him no harm whatsoever. The slight down drop and trip for Grey Dawn is a question, but he might get away with it now with the ground the way it's going to be. Um, but I think it's price. I think three to one's a fair price at late Tom. But I think he, there'll be a lot more improvement to come him step up and trip. But look, as Tom says, with these kind of races, this time of year, it's 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 April. It's for drinking pints and watching racing. Don't be surprised if that mad happens. Uh, like Giovinco become the next Gold Cup winner. Yeah, around part. We we are not sponsored by any bookmaker, so. I'm just going to say, I'm going to have a little bit there with live score. And you know what? When we were sponsored, yeah. it didn't fucking matter anyway, because we just fucking said what we wanted. Um, I believe you get 10 euros on any horse, and if they lose, you get your money back. So I'm going to have a little 10 euro bet on Blow My Wad. Of course you fucking are. Uh, I would be the most confident in Stan the Man Shepherd. He holds on too hard at times and doesn't go for the full... Ah, oh, you should have said come. Evo. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't come hard enough. Oh, I was there for you. You missed it. But tomorrow, if Sandman comes like the thunder, Jesus, <laughs> I could get 150 euros back. And if not, I'll get my tenner back. So below your wad, Sean. Also, sorry, Sean. Paddy Power actually doing. They give you a little token where you get money back first, second, first, first, second, second third, second, third, fourth on. Any race, you get to pick the race. That's a nice one. Sorry. Sean. I don't know how I follow up after that, to be quite honest with you. Um, but... <laughs> Blue pills are called. Blue pills. 
Um, look, I think it's very hard to get away from Gray Don in here. I think it's as simple as it is. I know he's short, he's even money, but look, he's gone to Cheltenham and he's beaten Genius Destiny. I don't see how that form turns. You have Villate Tom who jumped like a fridge at Cheltenham. I question him, and these lads are going to go off a hell of a gallop. I just see it being the exact same as the Turners. And if his jumping goes to pot again, he's only going to lose four dollars lands. And I think personally, they'll stretch him and they'll just test his stamina here, and he won't go home over this distance. Yet again, the ground is down and soft. Bit like Cheltenham, definitely not going to be soft. It's going to be heavy ground in here. You're going to have to stay a lot forward on Genius Destiny. will have absolutely no issues going to jump in and staying further than two and a half miles. I think they'll press the taps, they'll go on, and I really see him hard beat. He doesn't do much when he gets to the front. You've seen him when he went past Genius Destiny after the last at Cheltenham. He's just acted the dick in front until Genius Destiny got back and then a length. He's gone on again. That's just him. So I can see it being pretty much the same. Dan's Harry Skelton holding on and not kicking on. Six out will help and just going away, hopefully going down to the last. And I think he's bomb proof to be honest with you thomas um yeah I, look Ginny's destiny for a lot of the reasons that sean said um is, is an obvious favorite um talking to previous sponsorships uh i am gonna i'm gonna side with the the purple family horse here um Ilate tom for me Wonder he just doesn't it. He just doesn't act around Cheltenham. Uh, that's proven now. He didn't do it last year. He didn't do it. He didn't do it this year. He still only was third, only being 13 lengths behind uh, the airplane that's the 195 rated Gaelic Warrior who got beat off 129. Um, all, all Gaelic Warrior had to do was get me to start following him. It's a lifetime in this podcast. Any horse that Tom has ever liked. I went off and me and Andrew said, come over to our side. To the dark we side. will make you better. And look <laughs> at him now. Fucking win an article by about the million lengths. He, he got beat at short ahead that day. All he had to do that day, day. <laughs> one fucking hurdle straight. One hurdle. What? Not, not, not two. Not three. One hurdle. He had to jump one hurdle straight. He's a fucking one. Oh, I'm not over it. Um... Anyway, um, yeah, look, I, I think it'll take Dobbs. He doesn't act around there. His form is absolutely rock solid apart from that. He's finished second behind uh, Gaelic Warrior on bottomless ground over two mile three at Limerick. Um, there's no there's no shame in that at all. And I, I, think, he, I think he could take a bit of beating now. It'd be a good race between, um, it, it's, as you said, it's a small field, but um, if, if the few of them at the top of the market show up, it'll be a good race. Fair enough. 129. He's going to be rated 170 next year. Who? The Moose. Oh, do you know what he the didn't do? Lad. Do you know what he didn't do? He didn't win the Boodles. Nope. Oh, I don't know. Uh, the 220 at Aintree. The... Does he win the Gold, the gold Cup? No. Chapman Chase. No, Chapman Fever. Sorry. I, I don't, get carried away. I don't know where he's going to go, but what I would tell you is he would absolutely <laughs> kick 10 shades of shite out of that Il et a Francais. And that's a fact. Yeah, he got the blogger effect the other day, didn't he? He got he get Gaelic Warrior effect next year now if he turns up. I, I thought I had that fucking handwriting until I seen that fucker right. And then he starts oh, fucking back in Arsenal, right. blading arseways, putting Q's and T's and F's into Arsenal where I didn't know existed. <laughs> And like, he, you know and he, well. he, tur he turned sack into fucking Tom Daly last night. Well. Oh man, there's some jinx. That's him, all right. Oh, Manuel Lawyer. Manuel Lawyer, I'm going to help but you. He goes to every fucking uh, festival all week, Tuesday to Saturday, drinking and eating shite, and then puts a picture of himself in the gym on a Monday. Oh, fucking this, I'm fucking. Did you? In the fucking the video, Damn, fully ate me, like. Dave, you should become his online. I am not fucking PT and him. He online fuck personal off. trainer. What fucking content that would be? No. <laughs> Imagine trying to get him to do something. Honestly, lads, the best one I had to see was the weekend when he had Arsenal to win to Neil. That was the fucking best thing I've possibly <laughs> ever seen in my life. It's just up there. Apart from Saka Diving, is that what? That as well, Pablo. That got me wound up early this morning. I tell you the juices were flowing. Have you have you come over to the, to the conclusion that he did fuck himself in you have, denier? You have the other fella then licking windows over a Malta. Ah, fuck off. Anyway. Oh, he says Malta's probably fucking Bally Moon ah, somewhere. Fuck. Uh, the Boogles <laughs> anniversary. You're the great things at AI, he says. <laughs> 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 
four <laughs> oh, hurdle, grade God. one, uh, two miles, one far long. Sergino is back, uh, 10 to 11 favourite. Cargisi, I think is how they pronounce it, 11 to 4. Khalif de Burley, 8 to 1. Nurburgring, 8 to 1. Interlotto, 20s. And a Dirty Den, 150 to 1. Uh, I personally think Sergino is too short. He looked very good against Burdett Road, but um, the stable form all year. And Hendo's horses are not really all that superb in heavy ground every year. Um, I maybe think Norbert Ring would have a good chance. Uh, he likes heavy ground. He's pretty slow. Um, and maybe he'll come on from his run in the Triumph because he hadn't run for a while before then. So I'd go for him each way. Andrew? Uh, I agree with you with Sergino. I think he's a bit short for what he's done. Um, I'm going to go with Cargis. Uh, ran, she ran a very good race uh, in the Triumph Hurdle, beaten by Malge. Uh, then a uh, Leopard Sound is a very good run by beating Stormheart. So I think Big she's Big Madge. Big horse, big match. Um, I think she's a very good horse and proven horse. The only worry to have is a small field and her getting lit up a bit. Um, she does too much. Uh, she might pull away her chances. It's not a race I want to get stuck into whatsoever. Um, but look, she's going to go on the ground. Uh, Keith, De Bur uh, Keith Burley is the unknown quantity. Um, he's unbeaten. He could be a good horse. Uh, but I think she runs to her level and settles well enough. She is a lot in her favor. She's getting weight off all of them. And she's a proven grade one performer. And yeah, I think she's over that. I think she she take a lot of beating. Sean, are you going all in on Sergino? Of course he is. Yeah, look, I I don't know. It's it's very hard. I've had to have a chat with myself now because I nearly did um, unleash a lot on him, but I don't know how you can approach this. Like, it's impossible for me to be honest with you. Like, there's arguments, full arguments for both sides. Like, I think he's by far the best horse in this race. But how can you back him with the Nicky Henderson and he skipped Jelena? Mm. So it's a 50 50. I can fully understand. If someone's having the nuts on and taking the risk, I can understand that. And then I can understand the case where I've just gone and completely dodged it. And I don't know how I don't know how I can get stuck in and Nicky Henderson not run up the farm. I'll happily let her run. I think Cargis is definitely worthy opposition. If he's not up there, she gets a Philly allowance. She can get a little bit buzzed up, as Andrew said. That'd be my only worry. But coming back here on a flat track. Um, I think that'll play to her advantage at Cheltenham. I just think Big Maj out, out um, stayed or they got in a long, long battle up that straight and he came off the better of just on the hill. So what do I think? I think Sergino, if he turns up up to the form he's been under this season, he'll win, I have no doubt, but I just can't be having a bet. i just gone completely off it. I think Tom will tell you, you'll find better even money 10 yeah, to 11 like shots at Wolverham Wolverhampton probably on a Tuesday night, so no need to be back on that. Tuesday on 4.45. Yep. Uh Thomas Sergino or no. Oh, well played. <laughs> um, I would say no. I I I look he could go as you were saying there, he could go out and absolutely bolt up, couldn't he? But for me, you just couldn't back him. Um Cargis look looked like she was gonna absolutely hack up at um uh, at Cheltenham and, ju and just got outstayed by Big Madge. The the one for me in this, I was a fan of him early doors, is in Talotta. Um, I'm going to give him another chance. He's a wild price. He's 20 to 1. Uh, very good at Leopardstown. Not so good in the grade one. I don't know why. Maybe just ran a bit flat. I'm not 100% why he didn't run well that day. Uh, but at Limerick then, he came out and won a nice little uh, conditions race. You could question the form potentially going into it. But the second has since come out and finished second in the grade two behind Butler's secret at Fairy House. So I, I think the form's fairly strong. And for me, just at 20 to 1, I, I'd just take a swing on that. Uh, but like, look, Sergino could come out and win 20 laps, couldn't he? But you, you just don't know. So 20 to 1, I'm going to have a small bet on Interlotto. Okay. Uh, we're on to the 255 at Aintree, and it's the. William Hill, Bowl Chase, Grade 1, 3 miles, 1 furlong, always good race. Uh, Jerry Colombe, 7-4. Shishkin won it last year, 11-4. Corbett's Cross, uh, stepping up, and he did this last year as well. A bit. He's kind of a mad Emmett horse. I don't know what to say. 7-2. Say it. Shishin. Fucking scamming bastard. <laughs> Brave man's <laughs> game, 10-1. Uh, cheek pieces on. Uh, Ahoy Senor, 14-1. Always runs Aintree well. Gentleman's game, Fred, fragile grey beast, twenty-eight to one, and Thunder Rock, who's actually been decent enough this year, 
33 to 1. Sean. Do I even have to say? Corbett's cross. Tom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, but now look, the coming back here, um, same thing. Nicky Henderson, Shishkin, it's up to yourself. It's one of them you watch and see how they start running, and then you might start considering back and them come Friday or Saturday. Um, I just want to take on the Gold Cup. That Gold Cup race can take an awful lot out of them. And um, we see year after year when they join back up here, it doesn't all go too well. We've seen the blue tired and conflate it's completely blow out when they've tried to come back here and on heavy conditions that Cheltenham Gold Cup was running back on heavy here. I wouldn't be too surprised if one or two of these just might find it a bit tough going. And I think Corpus Cross, look, he's a horse that definitely could have ran the RSA. He had Factor Foil, and he's probably not as good as Factor Foil, but I don't think that's any mean defeat. Like, I think Factor Foil is a very good animal. And in here, like, God knows where our price he's hard to be in this race. But Corpus Cross comes back here. Look, he's been, they've had to try and settle them all season. They've been holding him up out the back, and they put a hood on him, and all of a sudden he jumps like a stag, and he settled beautifully in the National Hunt Chase. What did he be? Probably not much, but he couldn't have done it any better than what he did. He has a lot of pounds to find um, on ratings. That's that is one thing. He is he's getting a bit short now. In fairness, he's down to seven to two. He was he was a little bit bigger. Um, I'd say he could come out. I don't think he'll hold a seven to two. I'd say it'll be a bit of a drift since the novice coming in and people want to take on the tried and tested horses. But he have no issues in the ground. He stays forward. He has torn a pace, and I think if these are to be run a bit below form, I think he could be banging the mix. Uh, Tom, look, I agree with a lot what a lot of uh, Sean said. To be honest, I, I think you know Jerry Clam has had a few tough races this this uh, year, hasn't he? At, at Leopardstown and and again at the Gold Cup and Fair Play to him. I thought he showed he was a very very good horse in the Gold Cup. Shishkin, I just put a line from every time he runs. I just don't know. I can never get him right. Um, Brave Man's game has been way way below form. They're they're reaching for the cheap pieces, but I just think last year took a hell of a lot out of him. Hoy Senor would never ever back him. I couldn't back him with Dave's millions. Um and then Gentleman's Game has got his chance. Um and then Thunder Rock should find a few of these two good, shouldn't he? So Gentleman's Game is probably worth a small few euros at 28 to 1. But my main bet would be Corbett's Cross. Uh, and I, I actually this is one I'm gonna back uh tomorrow. So I, I think he stays all day, doesn't he? He'll go on the ground. Uh, but he has enough speed to get him into the race as well. And he's the one who could be improving. So, um, yeah, definitely call this cross there. Andrew? Uh, I think this is just made for Jerry to win. Um, as Sean said there, it's hard for a horse to back up the World Cup last year. But you have the last year to go back on with him. He was second in the RSA and then he came along and he, he put in the performance of, his, uh, of the season for himself Uh win the novice version last year over course and distance uh look he's going to have everything in his favor he's going to have ground conditions he's going to have on the back of a really good run behind gallop and the champ that's the, that's the best form in this race by country mile uh corbett's cross i was him and haw on over him but i think he has a still a good bit to find and this will be run at a pace that he's never at the run in a chase before um i i expect him to finish a running on second um at worst um, Shishkin, I'm saying it's Tom. I just can't back Shishkin. I can't back him any day of the week. Again, with days millions, I, wouldn't, I couldn't back him. Um, Brave Man's game is not the same horse he was. A high senior could be surprised package around here as he always is. He loves um entry. Uh, Gentleman's game of soft spot for him, but he's just so hard to catch right. Uh, Thunder Rock could be and not could run well as as well, but he probably find one or two too good. But yeah, I think. All in all, everything is set up for Jerry Clom to run a massive, massive race, and he's one I'll definitely be backing in here. Yeah, um, bar the RSA last year, or whatever it's called, Jerry's been beaten twice then, and both times by Gallop and Champ. I think he's the best form, uh, most likely winner. I wouldn't be surprised if Shishkin chucked it tomorrow and refused to race, to be honest. Feel that dirty, heavy ground underneath his hooves, and he said, mm-hmm. bring me home, Nicky. <laughs> I'm going nowhere, son. <laughs> Um, and uh, I think a high senior will run well. He runs entry well. The track suits him. Uh, he'd probably get a free lead. And he would have won last year only for Brian Hughes. Fucked it. <laughs> so, Jerry to win. Oh, I'd be second. Yeah. Uh, the 330 at entry, which is the entry hurdle. Always good race. Grade one, two and a half miles. Impere Moose is six to four. Bob, careful! I hate this horse. Careful, Bob the hanging 
dirty, rotten head carriage bastard, Hollinger, <laughs> is 15 to 8. Langer Dan, a very trustworthy and not scammed horse ever in his life. Probably has ulcers now. He might bleed. Possible ulcers. Oh, might I... have a chip bone in his knee, but he's 10 to 1. Might be identifying as a moose. Lucia <laughs> is 10 to 1. Uh, and then you're 14 to 1 bar. It looks between Bob and Imperi Pass, but Langer Dan could have 25 fucking pounds in hand. Who knows? Tom, tell us. I oh, know th- this is hard for me because I'm on the uh, I'm on the flip side of you, Dave. I actually love these two horses at the top of the market. Um, I'm a massive, massive fan of Imperi Pass. Can't wait for him to go chasing next year. I, I really think he's going to be a special chaser. He's got that Gaelic warrior form in the book, Dave, that I know that you like. Um, forget about the last day at Leopardstown. He had to make his own run, and that's not his gig. Um, so put a line through that. He's then been second behind the um, behind the Stairs Hurdle winner and the Champion Hurdle winner this year. Um, I can't wait for him to go chasing. But look, he's got his chance. Bob has got his chance as well. I can't split the two of them. I can't have a bet. I don't know what I'm going to do if they come down to the last and are upsides. But, um, yeah, I just hope both of them run well. And, yeah, come down to the last upsides and may the best horse win. Uh, to me, it sounds a bit silly, but I think Imperial Pass has been a little bit forgotten about. I would think he should be he, he should be probably odds-on in this race. Um, fucking dare you. He was beaten by Tia Hoopo at the start of the season which in the end was not a bad run because he's clearly the best three mile uh, hurdler um, and the track suits to you on the ground. Uh, then he's beaten by the champion hurdler and as Tom has touched on, he can just forget about the race at Leprestown. He didn't like front running and he just chucked it. Um, and the key is he's getting the ground that he loves as well, being a French bred and coming from there and his best performances were on real deep ground. I think you should be odds on. I think you'll win, and I think you'll win well. Andrew? It's mean. I'm never, ever going to desert Big Bob. Um, look, he's been kept here fresh for same as Imperial Pass. Um, look, you can take the result of the DRF with a pinch of salt because Imperial Pass did have to make us a run. But you go back to Cheltenham and the, what's the fucking name? Internationally used to be called, whatever it's called these days. The Real Keel. The Real Keel. Um, that was probably one of the best performances he put up since the he won the Ballymore, and that was on heavy ground. So he'll have no problem with the ground whatsoever. It's going to be one hell of a race between the top two. Look, Imperial Pass is a top class horse. We go back to this time last year, and we're all talking about Imperial Pass could be the next go- the next champion hurdle winner. Um, he has age on his side. Probably ref to the gills to win this. Um, with this guest turning into a real slog, slog. How much are they going to throw the Imperial Pass with him being a six-year-old? And, um, I'm just trying to talk my way out of Imperial Pass beating him. Look, I'm biased. I'm always going to pick Bob Ollinger, but it's going to be a, a really, really good race. Whatever Imperial Pass does here over hurdles, the old saying is going to be twice as good over fences. Sean, I know you are getting well stuck in to this if I know you and you're not going to back Bob. Yeah, I've had a few shackles already, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Um, but look, you go through it, and the two of them are absolute street clear. Like, the road to getting Langer Dan dropped down £10 starts now for the Coral Cup next year because he has an effect and hoping against these. Then you have Lucia, I know she ran toward in the champion hurdle, but like, they're £10 clear of what's in here, and they should be pulling well clear, in my opinion. Look, Bob, he's a donkey in my book. I just can't get him right. He just hangs oh, and does everything. He just hangs and does everything wrong when I have any sort of money on him. So yeah, he's fucking a facile fake, a looking prick. <laughs> <laughs> he's a big ex in my book. Um, so I'll happily take on Bob all day. And I thought you'd rob me notes, to be honest, because you have just said everything that I was going to say. I think Imperial Pass has been really, really overlooked. And some people are just throwing, um, throwing him to the wayside, which I think is a bit, bit cheap, to be honest, because as you touched on, he went to Ferdy House, traveled down to the last and looked like the winner and just, he was outstayed by the Hoopoo. And don't forget the Hoopoo drills for the day. Hatton's Grace, heavy ground. That was his big day. He's going to get his grade one. Then he goes to the Christmas and he runs second to the champion hurdle winner. Tall, great run. Nothing wrong with the feet. And he was beating three lengths. He went to DRF and you will not see a horse who hates 
front running more than this lad. Off the bridle from the get go, getting slapped, his jumper meant the pot, which is normally his asset, jumping out right, and it does all went completely wrong. You put a line through that. I know you're looking, say, Bob's in front of him. I definitely can see him turning that form. As Dave touched on, back on heavy ground here, up to two and a half miles. I think he's been really forgotten about, and I think he could be taking a win in here, and he'll be back up. I've had a little dabble for next year's article, I'm not going to lie, and I think he'll be back into the prices that he should be for next year because I think he could do this very well. Okay, we're on to uh, Friday, and the first one is the Mile Main Novices Chase, Grade 1, 3 miles, 1 far long. Uh, I know the way you're thinking, 11 to 4 favourite. Chiante Classico 7 to 2, Iroko 4 to 1, Hartwood 6 to 1, Broadway Boy 8 to 1, and Giustinko 10 to 1. I'll take this first, and I think Kim Bailey's horse, Chiante Classico, that won the Ultima at Cheltenham, will take all the beating here. Uh, I think I like, I know the way you're thinking, but I think the race he won at Cheltenham was not anywhere near the race that Chiante Classico won and I think he's been inflated by the distance and how it looked the ground and everything suited him um, looked like a superstar uh, he's rated higher than Chiante Classico but I don't believe them ratings and I think Chiante Classico will beat him Andrew? Yeah I agree with you uh, Chiante Classico as you said there his race was much better than what I know the way you're thinking is uh, one at Cheltenham, and if he jumps the first like he'd done at Cheltenham, uh, I know that we are thinking, and Shanty Classical gets into rhythm, gets away in front, he's going to be near on the possible to peg back around Aintree. It's a fast, uh, flat track, and if he gets into a rhythm down that back straight, um, he's going to be near on the possible to, to catch around here. I know the way you're thinking, and a summer on his back now, and next season, he it could be a, a monster in the making because. Visually, he looked unbelievably impressive, and Derek O'Connor gave him one of the rides of the season at Cheltenham to get him back into it, even though he was like sixty pounds right in. But anyway, uh, but Shanty Classical, look, I loved what I, what he done at Cheltenham. He just pinged every fence, and I, for, for a man that hates riding over fences, he rides him so well, yeah. David Bass. He just makes the horses mind up for him, and it's either shit or bust with him. But he's a very, very good horse in the making, and I think he'll take the world of beating here. Um, Aroko, no, nope. no cool. Um, I just right off his season, he'll come back next year. He'll be a decent enough horse. Um, I think the rest of them have a bit to prove. Uh, Broadway boy, if this was back at Cheltenham, he'd have a chance. Um, how could have come on again? But yeah, Shanty Classico seven to two. I think there's a great price, and I think he'll win. Uh, Tom. Um, yeah. Look, I I know the way you're thinking. Um. If he runs the same way as he ran at Cheltenham, he's going to struggle uh, because he had so much time to get into the race that day. He's not going to have that much time here. Chanty Classico, I can't really knock him. Oroko, I agree. Stop, start season, I don't really like that. Uh, Broadway Boy, I think his look, his best runs have been at Cheltenham. Uh, Giastinko is uh, Giastinko, isn't he? Um, I'm going to land on Hartwood. Uh, I thought he was very, very I impressive. <laughs> Very impressive at the DRF, Sean. He had two good runs behind two very good horses uh, in his runs before that. Um, and I just think he's coming here a fresh horse uh, and he could go very well. He was upside Percival Legolas um, at, uh, at the DRF when he fell. And anyone who tells you that he definitely <laughs> wouldn't. <laughs> what did he call him? Percival Legolas. Legolas. Percival Legolas. 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 Your man from down the road with the Legolas. Oh. <laughs> Percival Legawa. Yeah, anyway. There we go. See, what I was trying, I was teeing myself up for anyone who tells you that he would have beaten Hartwood that day is the same kind of people who tell you it was a penalty in the Arsenal game last night. So. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, I tell I you what, tell you what wasn't, that, there wasn't that face on you when you jumped the last together. I can tell you that at the DRF. I tell you, I tell you what would have happened. Percival Legolas definitely wouldn't have eaten Hartwood. Percival Legalwa would have. Legolas. A great name. That's your man from the fucking Lord of the Rings. Who? It's the elf from the Lord of the Rings. <laughs> uh, Sean. Yeah, look, I think he's a spot on. Another way I think him was crazy short. He was, right. I think he was in around two to one mark. I would have been taking him on all day at that sort of price. He jumps like a fridge. Watch him go down the force at, at Cheltenham, and he's gone down the inside, mate. An absolute. He nearly fell, yeah. 
Yeah, like, and there's going to be no hanging around here. There's two solid front runners there that are going to put these to the sword, and I think you'll fall to pieces. To be honest with you, his rating is absolutely bonkers, in my opinion, up to 158. 158. That's seriously inflated. I don't think he's anywhere near that level of horse. And he's one of Kim Yor. Like, he's not going to win like an RSA the way he has. So I think you can take him on all day. I see he's a point with Shianti Classico. We're actually going to take Broadway Boy. Um, I think he's a big enough price. He's out about 8 or 9 to 1. He could drift even again, to be honest with you, with them connections. But um, he's coming in here off the back of what I thought was a poor run, but just was one too many, in my opinion. They backed him up five times in five months, and he was doing very well at the start of season the chanting runs you don't get much better than that even the second one he had to dig very deep now his jumper made a little erratic down the back and he's gone and beaten the horse that's won the handicap uh three under through five and he had protector at back and toward good handicap that day with a decent weight on his back he's gonna bring a nice performance as i said he's gone to warwick and he's trying to go off the front and i just think it was one too many and i think he bled or he dirty scoped after the race too i heard them um, with his and david say so that wasn't as true running back here you can see the cheek pieces wide up around I'd say that's to keep him focused. He's great off the front. I think him and Shianti Classico could be the two up here now. Stretching these, going a good clip, and the cheek piece is on. Hopefully, focus more on the fences and his jumping stays in one piece. And I think he goes off the front here and puts him to the test. I'd say he could be well in the mix with Shianti Classico. And at eight and nine to one, I'd be backing him. I think he's a big price. Pretty good. Uh, we are on to the two mile, half a furlong top novices hurdle for another grade one. Uh, 255 on Friday. Uh, Mystical Power is 2 to 1. Firefox 10 to 3. Dysart Enos 92. Mr. Jiff 10s. Golden Ace 12s. Lump Sum 14s. Look Away 16s. Uh, personal Ambition 22 to 1. A good race. A Tom, you can go first. Thank you. Um, yeah, I oh, look. Mystical Power broke my heart in the Supreme. Uh, looked all over the winner um, and managed to get beat. Uh, th this could be more up his up his uh, up his street now, and I presume he'll take all the beaten here. Um, I'll give a shout out to the two mares, um, Golden Ace. I think is a very 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 good horse. We'll hold that news for a while. Um, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I think she's very very good. I, I don't I don't think there was much of a fluke in what she did at Cheltenham now. Um, Daita Enos, I know she's got plenty of fans and on this podcast as well, but all of her forms on better ground. Um, I, I think she'll get well put in her place now here. Um, she's going to find it hard against some of these more seasoned campaigners when she hasn't come off the bridle in, in a few runs. Um, but look, I presume if she wins, Paddy Burnett retires, I imagine. So um, we'll see if that happens. When's the suspension kick in? No idea. Probably, probably after he retires. <laughs> <laughs> after, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm retiring now. Fuck, I'm... He's going to retire. I mean, it's not like Ed Chamberlain said it live on ITV like he did about Daryl Jacob, but um, you, you just get the vibe that Paddy's looking for that one big win and, and off he goes. Uh, I'm going to side with both mares. I think I'll back both of them for small stakes. I'm... My head when you say mares and women. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew has come a cut across me there. Oh, uh, flabbergasted, aren't you? Flabbergasted. Um, yeah, I'm flabbergasted. Yeah. Women, I think Golden Mayor. Ace is very good, and I just know, know Dice Ardenos is better than her. I, I just know it. I can feel it in me waters. I seen Not it last fun. year. I believe it. Oh, uh, first one is a nice. Absolutely. 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 I start Zoom against Golden Zoom, and we'll have that's going to be a good race. That's they might not be fighting over. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, that makes it more because they could be the two of them could be miles behind. But sure, look, yeah, um, yeah. look, uh, Mystical Power and Firefox are very good, but I just really think the two mares are exceptionally quick. So I'm going to side with them and Andrew. Uh, Mystical Power for me, uh, as Tom. Broke my heart to Cheltenham. Broke a lot of our hearts to Cheltenham. Um, there's no slay steel here. Firefox will be second. I think it's going to be as easy as that. I think you'll get your money back here at Cheltenham. And it will be a win for Mark Walsh and Willie Mullins. That's about it. Remember, Dice Artino's the only one that hasn't ran to Cheltenham. Sean, tell him. I'm all aboard the scam train. The Brennan yes. and the Fergal O'Brien combination. Um, yeah, but yeah, look. I'm not a fucking 18 day man. I don't care. I'm retiring. No, no. At least you have to know the. The comfort that this horse will be trying. 
Yeah, yeah sure. Paddy Brennan yeah. wanted to get banned because he's not going to be riding after this day, so he doesn't give a fuck, does he really? <laughs> But um, look, Dois Arenas, as Davis touched on, I have a good feeling as well, like how devastated they must have been watching that Mirrors hurdle because this filly is absolutely rapid and that race turned into a turn of foot. And I have no doubt she's better than Golden Ace as well, the same as Dave. Coming in here off the back of the Supreme. Look, Mystical Power, I don't know. I just don't know what, what to make of him, to be honest with you. He's jumped the last and gone to win and he's chucked it. You can say he's probably outstayed, but I don't know about him, to be honest now. Firefox got absolutely no look, but Dois Sardinas coming in here. She comes in here fresh. I know she's only had three maiden runs, but that was all part of the plan of going to the Mare's Hurdle without the penalty. She's gone on heavy ground against the Geldings at Cheltenham on her second run and she's beat them well. Um, she's beat them very well there. I'm confident she can do it in against these. I don't think they're that strongest of a bunch, to be honest. She's getting seven pounds. You've seen what she done here, ain't she, last year? I'm confident she'll run a big, big race. I'm 9 to 2. I think she's a nice price. We're on. We're on. I Match believe, bets the whole lot. I believe said Miss Power chucked him and he got out of Slade Steel is just better than him, isn't he? Like when you look back at it. Oh, I just jumped the last. I don't know. Nice, zero nice excuse. big zero fucking zero excuses on the day. He's a big, tough-looking big bat. bastard. Yeah, he? he looks like a velociraptor or something. He's like a juggernaut. Jeez, a nice enchantment. I couldn't realize. I didn't realize he was that big. This is the first time I've ever seen him in person. Big black head in him. I don't know. Yeah, that's what I don't know. I don't know if he is a chaser. Is he jumping more like he's jumping? <laughs> We're moving on quickly. Uh, two mile four for long, three thirty, and it's the Melling Chase. Always a good race. Remember when Sprinter won this? Oh, I'm not. Pulling like hard, snap, doing handstands and like Dice Sardinos on Friday. It's going to be winning the other. Barry Gerty had his hands in his neck that day, and he was still fifty in lens clear. <laughs> Paddy, uh, Barry Gary was doing a Paddy Brennan many years before Paddy Brennan done a Paddy Brennan. <laughs> Barry was actually trying to win. <laughs> uh, Johnson Bonson is five to two favorite. <sighs> Fucking the rat is three to one. Someone said in a podcast, if awesome. you had any grade one horse that you could own, wouldn't you own Protect the Rat? Who the fuck? Why said that? in world? What the fuck? I, I could choose fifteen more. Who said that? I'm not even saying. Say it. Nope. We're a podcast of the people. Sam from fucking Next Gen. Ah, fuck's sake, Sam. Protect the rat. Pick Dory. I'd rather own Pick Dory. No, I won't. No, I'd take I would. that back. I won't. I would. No, I, I would. would. No, I would. Christ, I, I would. I would. I would. If you're selling them, Johnny Delahaye, Tom's boys in Victoria. M. Boy Allen, 6 to 1. Why Conflated why? 11s. Easy game 16s. Manila Drama, 66s. I think John Bond's going to win. I don't care about the ground. I don't care about Nicky Henderson <laughs> being drunk. I don't care about a lot. Nico being on him, stone hands. I just don't think John Bond likes Cheltenham. He fucking runs stink at Cheltenham. He does. He does. And he and he runs well everywhere else. He does. So I'm going for John Bond. Andrew, I have no fucking idea. Fair enough. There's so many variables that could go wrong here. Like John Bond is... He just, does he have the Nicky effect there? Is, is he sick? Protect the rat. I fucking hate the cunt. Pictori, I wouldn't back. Envoy, I would back, but he's just too old now. Conflatal will come there on All the right, snap the, and fall at the last like he always does. I'll put it to days. you like this, right? Whatever you mean about the run of Cheltenham where John Bond got bit. If Nicky Stable was alright... Oh, he wouldn't be 5-2. to two. There you go. He'd be, he'd be even money mm-hmm. to, to wallop yeah. the lot of these. Yeah. But, and, he's, at, he's at a price right and, now where he would take the chance. And Tom's maintained all year he needs to step up and trip, and he wants this trip. God. Tom must have his nuts on this. Right, John Bond wins. There we go. My main up. Tom, are you going for John Bond? You wanted him to win the right here? I I want to see how a few of Nicky's get on on Friday. Um, That's fair. That's fair. On that Thursday, is. sorry. Um, but if if a few of if Sir Gino goes a bolt up and whatnot, basically if Sir Gino wins, Tom. <laughs> yeah. Basically, if Sejino wins and the rest of them don't literally pull up five out like they were at Chandler, um, I I, just, I think John Bond's better than this lot, you know? Yeah. I just I think he's better that. than this lot. He, he's a grade one horse. Envoy's a grade one horse, but... I, I Too old really now, isn't he? legs are gone. Yeah. He would have won the Ryan Air if he still had fully had it. Yeah. I think he, 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 he had his chance win the cross country next year. Yeah, yeah. Win the cross country. Yeah, yeah. So nice. I wish. I wish. <laughs> He, yeah, he had his chance to go win the Ryanair. He's an absolute legend of a horse. I'm not knocking him for a second, but uh, I just think John Bond's... Yeah, and I think 
I think he's probably better than this lot, to be honest. But I, I would just question the form. Uh, Sean, jump on. No? <laughs> no, no, no. Um, I see everything that you said, and I do think it all goes down onto Zergino. If that goes wrong, then I couldn't be back in John Bond. The only thing is, he's just gone back to a bit of mad John Bond. He's sweating up and he's doing things wrong. And I wouldn't, I know he's the like jumping that I say, I know, I know his jumping wasn't, and he made that big mistake, but his jumping overall was absolutely dog shit going through that race. And I think it's just been getting a little bit worse every single time. But um, it's just the only thing that worries me. I can see the case if he was fit. Oh, if there was nothing wrong with Henderson Jared, I do think he'd be the short, like I just said, 11 to 10, even money probably in hell. But I think if you hang your hat on one and set your clock, it's probably picked up. Oh, I think he's absolutely guaranteed to run his race in, the, in hell. He won the race last year. He skipped Chant and he's coming here fresh. Envoy Allen, his days and the heavy ground would both be against him. Protect your rat. Look, you can't make heads and tails of him. And picked all you, I think you can just set your clock, but I think he'd be very solid. He'd probably do what, like, there's pace in here, but I don't see an out and out front runner. And I think if Harry Cobden sets his fractions right, like Asco, he could get away and make lengths at his jumping here. And I think that's where picked all he might be able to nick a couple and he won't get him back. So I think he's the solid horse in here that's guaranteed to run his race. Fair enough. Um, we are on to the Three mile, half furlong, four forty. The Sefton novices hurdle, grade one again. Jukebox man, seventy two. Dancing city fours. Reading Tommy Wong, four to one. Uh, Shannon of Bob, nine to two. Croke Park nines. Kintara oh, elevens. I want to take that award back off. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what I'm thinking right now. Yeah, sixteen to one. And there's some outsider there as well. Uh, Andrew. Uh, wow. Um, I'm going to take a chance on Dance City to turn around the form with the jukebox man. Uh, I thought he was giving a little bit too much to do on today. I thought they thought that the jukebox man would have come back to him quicker. Well, not quicker, but would have come back to him. Uh, I think it'd be really... They perhaps... <laughs> <laughs> Don't say... I know exactly what you're going to say. They perhaps thought think... he blew his wad. Oh, that was not what I thought yeah. you were going to say. Um... But yeah, I think he'd be ridden more aggressively this time, uh, like he did at DRF. And uh, aggressively, he... eh? Dance the city wins. Tom, um, I look. I thought this was this was wide, wide open. All, all I would say is, if always deserves to win, it's the jukebox man. Um, Nab's close home uh, at Cheltenham, but look, it doesn't always work out that way. Other than that. I think you could throw you could throw a few euros on anything in this field, to be honest. Sean. Yeah, I'm the exact same as Tom. I can't make heads not tails, but I just like this reading Tommy wrong baffles me now because Paul Town has gone from again. And I don't know what went wrong at Cheltenham. I looked, I don't know if he bled and I, I something's had to happen because he's just absolutely gone. Engine on the floor, finished at the tour at last. And I can't make heads or tails. Paul Town has gone from again when he has Dance and City who ran a cracker uh, um, in the Chantlin bar in the Bartlett. And I just don't know what to make of it. I really, really don't. Uh, I generally like this race. I find it hard this year. Um, and I'm going to side with the handicapper, Kintara. Uh, he's just so tough. And these novice three miles, I talk to Sean a lot about it, boy. Not the back reading Tommy wrong for Cheltenham. It's usually the toughest horse wins, not the best horse wins. And he, this year, has run in three top-level handicaps. He was second in the pretemps at Cheltenham uh, behind Mom Morale. He was up there the entire way. He did the exact same thing, so the jukebox man won't get away in front this time. Um, and he'll just keep going. He's slow, he's tough, and that's what you need in these kind of races. Uh, we are on to Saturday, and the first one... We have the Mersey Novices Hurdle, and it's two and a half miles. And in here, as favourite, we have Brighter Days Ahead, I'm sure. That's, this is, wow. It's gone nuts. Brighter Days Ahead, 72. Caldwell Potter, we finally see him again, 72. Slade Steele, 92. I'm not sure he's going to run really tall, is he? Yeah, he won't be 92 if he was. That's Bill the Rickery Dickery. <laughs> <laughs> Seven to Best one. Uh, Firefox in the other race. Reading Tommy Wrong, other race. Asian Master 10s, Ill Atlantic 10s, and then Outsiders all the way down. Andrew? Yeah, kind of have to be on the side of the call of Potter here if Slade Steele doesn't run. 
Um, Fair enough. Yeah. I I think I think he can give the seven pounds to brighter days ahead if she does run here. I think it'll be a ballsy move to to run her here. Um, but I think he he just has the form in Ireland when he was tra- trained with Goro. And the fact that he skipped Chetlam, um, I think, is massively in his favour. The ground won't worry him at all. He's he's won a grade one on heavy ground, and yeah, I think seven to two is a fair enough price because I think if some, if Slave Steel is not declared here tomorrow, I think he will eventually go into favouritism. And you take out Rian Tommy Wrong, Firefox, um, yeah, he becomes a lot shorter. I I think he's a he's a f- a fair solid bet in this. Yeah, I don't. I wouldn't think this one the race. I won't have a bet in because I can't split the top two. I really like Caldwell Potter and I really like Brighter Days Ahead. So I might just watch this one and see what happens. Um, two good horses, and it begs the question: If Caldwell Potter wins, Tom, how good is it for me? Oh, yeah, another another absolute six man. It's for me. His form looks rock solid, doesn't it? Um, yeah, I, I'm I'm a bit like you, Dave, in saying that you're not going to have a bet here because you can't split them. Brighter days ahead. I, I do think it's going to take a good one to to give her seven pounds. And even on the ratings, it suggests that she should be bang there uh, with seven pounds uh, on her side. So yeah, um, I, I can't I can't split them. I'd love to see brighter days ahead. Colwell Potter and Slade still turn up here because uh, I think it'd be some race if they did and uh, if they they all run their race. So um, very very hard to split them. Uh, Sean. Yeah, look, I'd be strong enough now if Slade Steel comes here. And there's only one bookie that's going 9 to 2. And best of luck trying to get a better on it then. But um, he's being clipped in. And I don't know whether it's been between the two mile and two and a half mile race because he is generally three to one in most places. And I think if he runs here, he has a standout piece of form, in my opinion. Um, he's gone and won the Supreme. He's, th- he's won over two and a half miles. He's ran up behind Ballyborn. There's no shame at the DRF. And I just think he brings her all in here. The Caldwell Potter. Look back now and I say to myself, it was beating Predators goal, five lengths, really all it. I think um, Slade Steel has shown a lot more than that. I'm happy to take on brighter days ahead. And the only one that I would give a shout, if Slade Steel doesn't turn up, would be um, this Jimmy Desai. Um, I think nope. I've had a look back. I've had a look back. I've had a, I've had a look back, and I don't think that Ballymore run was all fluke. To be honest with you, you go and look at the first day he ran. He was behind Asian Master. He gave him seven pounds. And look, coming on for the run, I'd say it's not really that bad of a run. Asian Master's going to come forth in the Supreme. He's going to dict up in his maiden hurdle, and then he's going to come second in the Ballymore. Where I thought he was keen early, traveling around early, and I thought he could have settled better. Um, he's been beaten by Ballymore. No shame in that. But I think he, if if Slade Steel's not here and he's around 10 to 1 I think he's a good each way bet I think he can improve again and I think the form is there but he's overlooked going into the spring and he was 33 to 1 and you look back and the form is sort of there now to be seen it can be Jimmy Fallon or Jimmy Superfly Snooker or Jimmy Desai he's fucking no chance he would have won the Carl Cup on times I uh, yeah, he would have won the Carl Cup, bet Langer Dan Langer Dan uh, if Slade Steel does run now he's going to win yeah but that's yeah. a different story Um, the 305 uh, three miles, half a furlong, and it's the Liverpool hurdle, grade one for the stairs. And many, many times there's been a mad result in this race. So don't worry if Chupo gets bet because he doesn't run or isn't supposed to run really quickly. So I'd be totally against him. But Chupo's in there at 11 to 4. Florent Porter, fours. Sir de Burley, sixes. Irish Point probably won't run. Crambo, eights. Strong leader, tens. Langer, nan. Botox, has. 14s body one imagine body one running in another race Poor body one must be correct <laughs> body one is a cousin of the little wank i'd say because <laughs> they just run all the fucking time fucking train, but uh like, hewick's in here hidden valley snake marie's rock dashel drasher apple away boy she was fucking useless the word you want for oh campaigned like dirt was the three words I was looking for. Uh, trained by the Scottish Paul Nolan. Uh, whoa! They both have curly hair, too. Does not know where to fucking place horses. <laughs> similar hair. No, well, I can't really talk about hair because I don't have any, but they do have similar hair. <laughs> Runs, what's the horse called? You like? Sander Clegane. Where the thing should have been running in a fucking four miler. I'd say Sander is just useless. We've come Why to the fuck around him in a great one. I mean, it should. Uh, yeah. yeah. To be honest, he was really badly. And he's off. 
Run, run the man two mile race start of the season against the Magic was just stupid. Like you can see why I made a comparison right now. Yeah, yeah, they're from Wexford. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Tom, who do you think is going to win? Down there, Wexford. Jesus Christ. Um, sometimes, Dave. Um, who? <laughs> I wanted to finish that sentence. <laughs> I really wanted to, to finish that sentence. What's that supposed to mean? I don't know. So I just don't know sometimes, Dave, is, is the problem, I think. Um, Thierry Pru, look, if he turns up in the form he was at Cheltenham, he should go very, very close again, shouldn't he? And there's kind of... I'd say there's no reason why not, but they've barked on about this has to be fresh all season long, so there's probably no guarantee of him doing it at the same time. Irish Point has drifted like a barge, so I presume they're not going to run the two of them against each other. Um, I think Florin Porter has got a, got a cracking chance. Um, I know I'm probably biased because we know the lads now, but um, I, I I think he's got a great chance. He's been he's been what se- he's second in this race. He's third in this. He's been third in this race. Um, you know he's fresh enough going into that into that uh, into the stairs hurdle. Um, you know he can back it up. You know he's going to run his race. So you know, I, I, I'm going to go with Florian Porter. I just think something outsider will win this. Uh... All the other horses have been running. R- yeah, Hidden Valley Lake. All the other horses have been running like nuts all year. Uh, the Chupo definitely needs gaps between his races. The stats are there to show you that. Um, or his point's not going to run. Crambo was really disappointing in the stairs. And then Strong Leader's not good enough longer than. So, Hidden Valley Lake, why not? Yeah. Andrew? Um, yeah, I'm going for an outsider as well. Um, I'm saying with. Chupo. Um the whole he needs the breaks between the races. That's believed to be true, which is shown in the past that he probably does. You can't really back him in eleven to four. You could leave him go win and off you go, happy days. Um I'm gonna take a chance on Bot- Botox Hoss. Uh won't mind the ground whatsoever. Bolted up by nine lengths last time over three na- three miles half furlong. Uh, with five lengths behind Noble Ace at Cheltenham. Look, he's not the best horse in the world, but there's stranger things have happened in this race. Uh, as I said, ground conditions won't be a problem. Uh, he's 40 to 1. He's decent each way price. Uh, I, don't know, I, don't, I don't think Florent Ford ever performed really well after after Cheltenham. I know he was second in this before, but that was in his younger yeah. days. I think he just goes over the top after Cheltenham. <laughs> Tired of Burley, I can't believe he's 6 to 1, but look, He's one that will be plodding on the end. Crambo, I wouldn't back at all. Same with Strong Leader. Then it comes down to Botox Hoss, Hidden Valley Lakes, another good show. I think anything could win in this, but I'd be looking at double figure price here back in that and in this. Botox Hoss is eight years old. That's as wild as the fact that Tom is younger than me and Andrew. That is a fact. Uh, Sean. Um, this absolutely stinks of a big G right off scam if you ask me now because they bang on about this chihupu not being able to back up right they have him up the top of the market they've already point up the top of the market and so the borlays has gotten 14 to 1 into 3 to 1 this absolutely stinks that the hoopoo is not going to run or his point is not going to run and they've had a right off with this of yeah i think i What's think uh, honestly, I think they're going to do a proper job. I will not be surprised in the morning if the Hoopoo is not in this race and he's automatically like three to one favourite of Florida and Porter. I see Tom's point. Look, I couldn't be a backer of him, um, of Sawyer de Borle, but I'm just saying I can see that idea and that happening, not a problem like last year. But I think Florida and Porter has done um, very well coming back over hurdles in the stairs. He was, uh, I was a bit surprised that they didn't go on straight away on the Keith Dunn, who I don't know, first time riding him, maybe he's getting used to him and now he's had a second spin. He might be a bit more sharp to him going off and dictating and trying to sprint away at the end. That'd be my idea of doing it. But look, there's no getting away. These English stairs are absolutely honking. Like the Irish have filled the four, seven places in the stairs and the dogs, like they're miles behind them. So I think the Irish can pull clear in this. And I wouldn't be surprised if Florida and Portland side of the Borlays are banged their ballot in the room. Yeah, that's, that's not a bad show, to be honest. And the race yeah, will be to with front runners and... Up. Heavy ground, very slow, staying on. Uh, the Magol Novices Chase, last grade one, uh, two miles, found the 50s, two to one. Uh, Etalon, 10 to three, Herky de Soy, uh, six is Matata. I genuinely hate that horse, uh, 10 to one, Jello, 12 to one, JPR, one. 
Yeah. When you say JPR one, it's just it's, you got very in- inferior oh, there. Yeah, no, I like him. I like him. Oh, uh, yeah, a Liberty Hunter Why? twelve because it's just it sounds good. JPR one. Yeah, yeah. Just sounds like a jet plane. Yeah, but he's not. No, he's crap. But that's not the point. <laughs> Uh, Liberty Hunter twelve to one Nickelback this twelve to one. Go on, go on. This is how you remind me. Of what I yes, am. yeah. <laughs> so I like you. Sorry. Quilixios twelves. Master Chewy fourteens. Anyone have the winner of this, Sean? Yeah, well, um, I can't get my head around one here, and I'm in London the weekend, and I'll chuck myself off Big Ben if Etalon wins this, because I haven't a scooby do how this is 3-1. to one. I think it's absolutely bonkers, <laughs> to be honest with you. Like, this is a handicapper coming in here. I don't know if the skeletons have handbraked this thing to the floor as well, and all of a sudden it's going to be winning a grade one, but I cannot get my head around this. I will be getting Etalon laying to get this out of front three, because I just don't see how this is coming into grade one company. I'm going to run a big race. Found a 50 backing up off the Arkle. He's he is solid. He runs his race every single day. And I think he's a solid favourite. You've Hercules to side. They've tried to line up at this, but the ground has gone wrong, which would be a little bit of a worry. Matata, the Jello, JPR1, and then you have Nickelback. I think you have plenty running for you. And I will definitely be trying to get Etalon out of places. Yeah, I think found a 50 will run well. I w- would follow that form. Um, he's run well all year. I, I just can't not back Nickelback. I'd Maybe he's not running or something because he's twelve to one. But he's jacked up. You know what I mean? He's jacked up, isn't he? He's he's just going to go like lunatic, lunatic speed. And if James Best doesn't let him go lunatic speed, as I said earlier in the year, then let's get somebody else. Let's just go fast as you can and just try stay there. Fair. He's not going to watch this podcast, but if he does, James, <laughs> send him a DM on well. Sit on him. Kick him Enjoy in the ride. belly. If you think if you think you're going really fast, go faster. Kick again. <laughs> Kick go again. <laughs> Andrew. Um found fifty, look, he's as tough as nails. I don't think he'll he'll have any bother backing up. Come on, nickelback. Um no, I don't like nickelback. Why? It just doesn't go fast enough. Oh, there's no reason to say that. That was just, that was just mean, though, to be honest. Um, I'm going to take a chance on... This is the he- head over, This is heart overhead. I'm going to take a chance on Clixias. Ah, oh, will you? You can write off what happened at, at Fuck. the Ark. Look, this is a shit race. Tom is going to pick him too. Oh, um, Jesus Christ. Going on the boat, that magic stuff that happens when they go on the boat. What's that, What's that, Sean? Elaborate there. Come on. They improved 30 pounds. For what? Point, uh, go on. The point behind it. What, say what you always say in the chat. Come on. You have the platform now. Come on. For, tra- the point, for traveling over on a boat. It's the point Henry. of hiding on the boat. Bottler. And the tablets. Henry, Henry, doesn't, Henry doesn't trade 80 winners in Ireland every year. Sean completely forgets that. that <laughs> yeah. day, but... it's, it's the tablets for the seasickness. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, who was saying no? I can't do it. You do. <laughs> <"Nee!" laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think you're right after the run in the article. Rachel was left at the start. The phrase was over. I think mean, twelve to one here. Look, we're getting prices off best odds on him. Um, See this phone here. What's up? And you know when you go onto the Paddy Power app? Shut up. I know. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <No, fuck. laughs> so, yeah, Nickelback. Yeah. Go fast, James. Just don't fall, Rachel. Uh, but yeah, yeah, look, 12 to 1 things a massive price. Look, he's better than Etalon, Hercules, Sai Matata, Jello, JPR1, uh, Liberty Hunter. When you take that out, he's 12 to 1. I'd have an each way better. Can I just say like, genuinely, yeah. can anyone tell me how on earth is Etalon is 3 to 1? Nah, <laughs> because uh, the bookmakers have ministry to one. Ah, he shouldn't be three to one. He's a moolie. Nah. Uh, what, what, what did he win his race? What price? He's, I bet you he's odds on nearly all of them. Four to six, one to six, and then six one to five. Like Gunsight, Gunsight Ridge. You bet the last time. Good Tom, horse. Good back form. Last grade one, Tom. Who are you going for? Um, I, he says no. Etalon. I give up. No. I'm not going to lie, I didn't even know who Eflon was until I started looking at this race now, so I'm definitely not going to put him up for fucking grade one. Um, I wouldn't follow low-grade English handicaps that much now, so uh, 
So yeah, uh, I'm with Andrew. I'm going to put Calixios. Um, I just think. Come on, Ruby. Ruby often says, I think, uh, and a lot of jockeys, uh, a lot of wise jockeys, often say, <laughs> you can't win a race at the start, but you can definitely lose it. Um, and what happened definitely cost Calixios the race. It was over. Over from then, uh, I'm not convinced he's a Cheltenham horse anyway. Even though I know he was he was placed in his younger days, but I think that was a bad enough race. Um, you know, I, 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 won the triumph. Ruby also said last year was no good, so see, he tells low, he tells lies. <laughs> <laughs> he um, also said that Forney Hollow was 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 working well last year, and he seen him, and he never even fucking seen the horse. Poor chap was dead. Um. Yeah, look, I uh, I, I give Calixios a chance. I, I see what you mean, Dave, about Nickelback, um, and I, I wouldn't put you off him as well. But found him fifty is solid, and he probably deserves one. Um, but yeah, th- there's some there's some middle of the road horses there in the middle of the market, and I think those two are the, the outsiders. Uh, I think they've got a good chance. Last one, the national three each. We're going over an hour, so we're not going to keep it long. We're going to try and get this done quick. And Andrew is going to go first. Uh, right. First one is going to be meeting other waters. I think he's still ahead of the handicap and he's still learning um, as he goes. Um, the run behind Shanty Clasco, he's five lengths, five and three quarter lengths behind. He was running on again to finish like the penny was dropping again. Um, he got outpaced. He will have no problems with staying. Ground won't be a bother. I think he has a cracking chance. Um, second one, Limerick Lace. Uh, Mayor Chase winner, I love her. I think she's in here off a very uh, manageable mark. Um, she is 20 to 1 in places. Uh, who Mark's not picking her, is he? Yep. Uh, um, fuck. Um, but that's the <laughs> negative money. <laughs> um, but she, she'll have again, she'll have no problem staying. She was second in a Tri Town um, around Navin. I never get that yep. right. Navin or Nice? Yeah. Uh, Navin, yeah, Navin. Navin. Um, again, no ground worries. We'll stay. And the last one, where the fuck is it? Um, da, da, da. Naslam. Uh, look, again, this is all ground dependent horses. He got absolutely wallop from winning the Welsh National by 7 million lengths. Pull up in uh, in the in the Gold Cup was just out of his depth. Look, he's high in the weights. I, I Grant that he's high in the waist, but he's one of these horses that will give you a solid run for your money. I think he's too big in, in, in the price. And the softer it is, the better his chances are going to be. And I think 21 is too big. Um, yeah, they're the three. Tom? Um, I, I'm i going to go to lower in the weight um, is, is my is my angle. Only two of the last uh, two of the last 10 winners, I think I'm right in saying, I'm just going to check that, have carried 11 stone or more. Um, that was many clouds and Tiger Roll winning the second national. I think weight's going to play a major factor with the ground being the way it is. Um, and the ones I'm going to go for, which I'm just trying to dig out now, I think Vanillier is an obvious one. I think the ground is going to slow it down for him. He got a bit out pace last year. Um, very good run the last day. Uh, nice little prep. Gavin's been targeting this all year with him. I think he's the obvious one at the top of uh, top of the market. Um, Gallia Della Toe. Dan Skelton. Um, all you hear is that that mare needs soft ground. She's in second in a in a three mile five Warwick Classic. She'll stay all day. Um, I think she's got a cracking chance of ten stone six. And then I'm going to throw in Panda Boy. We know he stays very well. He's been placed in some big uh, big field handicaps. He'll go on the ground as well. Um, and yeah, I think he'll he'll have a cracking chance for Mike Brazel. So they'd be my three against the field. Uh, first one for me, same as Andrew, Limerick Lace. Uh, I was impressed all year with her, but I was more impressed at Cheltenham. I, I didn't think she could uh, beat Dino Blue at that trip because she's definitely a stayer. Um, she's a bit nuts as well, and I do love uh, nuts female. Um, she's probably on the right side of the weights. Um, I agree with Tom and Galia Della Toe. Um, yes. She very much looked like she wanted a real staying trip the last time. I think she was beaten by is that my silver lining or it was um she was kind of held up to get the trip and then it looked like oh shit we've left this behind but um I think she can run very well here. She's a really good jumper and loves heavy ground 
And then the last one, I can't understand why some of the horses are ahead of him in the in the market. Maller Mission. He's definitely after being forgotten yeah. about. Um second in the the Hennessy and the whole season has been planned. And fair enough, John McConnell hasn't had the best season this year. His, his horses have been in and out kind of like Nicky's and a few in, in past years. But second over that Martin trip last year, um, sorry, fell when he was going to be second or first to Cheltenham. Uh, second then in the, what is the Hennessy now, to the ill-fated, that's all right, Gino. And he looked like he had that race sewn up. He was up there from the front. He's the only one that stayed up there. That's all right, Gino. was way out the back, ran him down at the end. Um, he should be up there. He jumps really well. He should stay being by Mahler. Um, I think he's just completely after being forgotten about because John's had a poor enough season. He's been put away since then, specifically for the race. And I'd actually love to see John McConnell win. We'd like to see Tom win it as well. Sean. Yeah, um, we've taken the route. We've gone for two at the bottom of the market as well, uh, at the bottom of the weights, and then one in the middle of the weight. Um, I can't stress how bad this ground is going to be. It's heavy. They're saying it's soft. It's heavy, and they're only due more rain between now and the national. So this will be some quad more. Um, the lads have put up the two. Uh, meeting the water down the bottom, I think he could be still unexposed. Uh, we seen what he done at Christmas when he absolutely bolted up and the money was on, and then the DRF he came down. And at Cheltenham, I just think he had too much of a weight on the bad ground for the first time. And he learned a lot. He came there and he just didn't have enough to go and get Shanti Classico. I don't think that was a bad run. And the other one was Vanillier. They're the two up the top. I think Vanillier is, look, he's definitely been planned around this all season. Don't worry if you look at his form and see more letters than numbers there. But he's come out and he's had a perfect prep running up against Zoya Maximus. I think last year, I don't know if they were worried about getting home or not. I'd say this year, Keith Dunne, he'll be a bit more edgy to kick him on and get a bit closer rather than holding him back for a finish because he came home like an absolute train the last year against Cardiff Grambler and he's up five pounds I think he can definitely run a big race and as Dave has touched on I think Marlon Mission at 20 to 1 he's definitely being forgotten about as well he's ran a cracker in the Hennessy he's the only one up the front as Dave said that stayed in around there that's all right Gino came about 20 lengths behind him he's kicked on and he's the only horse even though John McConnell has been running bad he's ran to his form this season it wouldn't worry me too much I'm back in here I think he's definitely like at 20 to 1 you can back him at now I think he's definitely being forgotten about running in the big handicaps he'd be up the front i'd say oh trouble i'm gonna run this race so them three will be the one for me and that's that for entry any next best sir oh Christ. naps uh, do, you have a, do you have a best uh, bet just one mm. best bet uh da, 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 da. sean one best bet for the meeting jerry um, Clump. jerry for andrew i'll, I'll go next if sean's waiting yeah go on yeah, Tom. Tom, far away I've I've got a nap and an next best, so I'll actually do a reverse order, uh, just for a bit of crack. Um, my next best will be Corbett's Cross. Um, I, I think he's got a hell of a chance. Um, my nap comes in the one twenty on Saturday. Uh, I know what this is. The handicap hurdle, a horse called West Balboa, uh, trained by Dan Scott. Holy shit! <laughs> okay. Back in handicap company, tell him where she belongs, is it? Back in handicap company, Sean, as you say, um, look, she won this last year. She absolutely shit in, and let's call it, let's call it as it is. Uh, she's got a one, her only other start at Aintree then uh, as well, uh, her first run this season. Uh, the wheels came off in the grade one at Ascot. <laughs> she got ulcers all done. <laughs> dashed all our hopes and dreams of an early retirement. Um, and then she ran bad again at Sandown. Have a look at her last run, lads. She got a lovely little run back. I'd say they. I'd say all they wanted was for her to uh, to finish out her race. She only got beaten four lengths. The camera turns and you can barely see her on the screen. Um, but she 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 actually showed that she can finish out a race that day. Um, Dan had a treble at market racing today. He's in cracking form. She will win on Saturday, and her full sister runs next Thursday at Cheltenham. Uh, Sean? And wins. <laughs> Um, my nap is actually we didn't cover it. Oh, I nearly forgot about this. In the bumper on Saturday, the Gellens bumper, this Mr. Mega. Look, I think I picked him out earlier on the season and I think he could be a good horse. John Joe O'Neill doesn't get many of these and I think he could be one that could probably take him to the grade one day next season. If you go and watch There's him, a reason. Like, 
well, if he fucking sticks him to the floor, I won't be happy. But look, he's won like an airplane the last two twice. And you watch him at Doncaster, he's absolutely pissed up. I think you get a decent price about him in this sort of field. You probably get about seven to two, three to one, and he'd be me nap. And then my next best, um, slate. No, actually, slate seal. I don't know if he's gonna run. He'd be my next best, but if not, Dice Hardinos. Johnny, who was looking great start of the season as well, along with all the other horses in John Joe Stable. But there you go. Yeah. Uh, I, think is, is sexy. I think Imperi I think Pass will win. Um I would be surprised if he can't beat Bob Ollinger and Langer Dan. And another one of Dan Skelton's horses. And many other people have tipped it up, so I can't take full credit. But I've been uh, waiting to back her since the last day. She was ahead of West Balboa in a race, and it's Katira. Mm. who was uh, second to Irish Point at this meeting last year, has been given quite a kind of quite campaign, shall we say. Um, also, a Langer Dan campaign. A skeleton had tr- three in the race um, that they were last in. West Balboa was in it. Boom, boom, in the same colours West Balboa was in it. And Katir was in it. And Nico Stonehands was on it. And he didn't try very hard <laughs> to win. Because Dan Skelton won anyway. And uh, I think maybe West Balboa will win, and I think Katira will win, and there'll be many winners for Dan Skelton. My next best is Baby Kate in the Mayor's Baby Bumper. Kate. So there you go. Yeah, bit of singing, bit of dancing, all sorts today. We weren't live. I'm not. There's so many people are texting me saying, well, "Where's the podcast gone? Where's the podcast gone? Is the podcast gone? You finished the podcast? How come we didn't do the podcast? When you come back." Tom was late and everything fell apart. <laughs> For once, it wasn't even my fault, but I, I just no, felt Andrew. It wasn't even Andrew, my fault. It was you. You may have fault. to spend about five hours editing this video, is the only issue. No. Yeah, you must be fucking joking. If <laughs> copy, paste, <laughs> upload. If you watched the start and didn't come to the end, or if you're only jumping in at the end and didn't come at the start, <laughs> you came at the start. you've missed quite a lot. But we have a competition. Ah, good times. The competition is for the horse racing pins that we had here throughout the season. They're in my um, Fever La France bike, ready to go. They're amazing little pins. They have little cufflinks and all that going out there now, too, too, I believe I saw. But we have some pins to be won. And all you need to do is comment underneath the video who's going to win the national if a few people get the right answer which is probably highly unlikely because it's quite hard to get the winner of the national uh, we'll do a draw and the winner will be announced on Twitter on Sunday please do the usual like subscribe we've a couple more shows uh, one more show Punchstown preview then we are not doing the flat for the summer we might have some selections up on Twitter and stuff but no flat racing so we'll be back for Punchstown we'll try to be live that time try to get it working Tom won't be late and have a good entry. It's a lie.